going on, guys? Good morning. Now, it's early as shit on a Saturday, so nobody's gonna watch this live, but maybe you can watch it later. Um, it's 7.40 right now. I got up at 4.20. No, it wasn't a smoking joint. I had to drive my wife to the airport. And we live about an hour and a half, maybe, from the airport. So, uh, just dropped her off. And, um, thought I'd do a live stream on the way home to keep myself awake. Because you guys are awesome, and that's what you do to me. Keep me awake. Um, so, I had a couple interesting thoughts. What's up, guys? Hey. You are awake. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm interrupting Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, that's what I used to do Saturday mornings. Um, so, uh, what is freedom? Can anybody answer that? Like, what is it? And how much of it do you need? in order to actually be a free country or to be a free person, right? So let's say you are free to pick the job that you like. Is that freedom? You're free to eat the foods that you like. Is that freedom? It's a freedom, but are you a free person just because of that? Well, no. If maybe you're living in a prison, but you still get to pick what foods you eat, or you get to pick which job you work within that prison, then obviously, no, you're not a free person. Um, so, how much freedom does it actually take to be a free person? And what is a free country? Is a free country a country where everybody is... Everybody has freedom. Whatever whatever that's determined to be. Um, and I ask this because... We have... You know, everybody's always saying, Well, we wouldn't be so free if it weren't for the government. We wouldn't have such nice roads if it weren't for the government. Um... We wouldn't be so safe if it weren't for the government. You know, all these things we hear all the time. Well, okay. Um, but the entire world has government. Everywhere you go around the world, there's government. And the types of governments vary. Uh, the, amount, the amount of freedom that people have varies. Um... And what's the difference? I mean, they have government. Is one government better than the other? What makes it better than the other? Is it the politicians are nicer, they care more? And is it is it just the politicians? Does it have something to do with the people? So, for example... Let's say... Um, Let's say you take the government of, of China. Um, maybe that's a bad example. Let's let's go with like um, let's take a dictator from uh, I don't know. Um, let's just take a dictator from the Middle East. I'm not gonna name any country specifically. If you were to put them in power here in the United States or there in the United States, would you have a government that resembles the same government that they had in the Middle East? Would it be the same? Or, would the people of America reject it and say, no, that's, that's terrible, we don't like you, you're a dictator, we want our freedom? I think it would be the latter, right? People would say, no, we want, we want our freedom. We don't want a dictator. Um, although a lot of people who uh, support Trump might uh, 
yeah, not knowingly anyway, be supporting a dictatorship. Um, but that's another story. But so the question is, you know, like a, a lot of people like say America's number one. We're number one. We're number one. What does that mean? And why do you think that? And why is it? And, you know, it's, it's highly debatable whether or not America is number one for anything. But um, what makes it number one? Is it because of the government? Or is it because of the people? And, you know, you could argue that, you know, well, the government did all these, you know, all these programs, all these economic incentives and, and uh, you know, everything else. And, and that's why we have the number one economy, because the government did all that. But doesn't it also have a lot to do with maybe the work ethic of all of the Americans that drive that economy? Um, does it have to do with maybe the consumerism that drives that economy, the, the consumption that we have? Um, there's a lot more to it than just government. So when people say, like, okay, yeah, but, uh, you know, government makes these wonderful roads. Okay, yeah, they, they built the roads. Would they, would, you know, did they build the roads because government was just sitting around one day and said, hey, you know what would look nice out there? Some roads. Or was it that people had an interest in traveling from city to city and they wanted roads? In fact, before there were roads, they, they still managed to travel from city to city across the country before we had like an interstate highway system. So, so what is it really? What builds all this stuff? I would say it's not the government. The government is arguably the um, facilitator for a lot of these things. But um, that doesn't mean, you know, the, the, the people and the culture are still the culture. So, so, you know, so they would still get what they want. If they wanted roads, if they wanted a way to travel across the country, they'd make it happen. Um... The government didn't invent airplanes. Of course, once airplanes were invented, the government came along and said, we're going to tell you how to fly them. Um, we don't know anything about them, but we're going to tell you how to fly them. Um, but so this is interesting also because we have um, we have issues in every country. Every country has different issues, Right. Um, some of them have crime issues, some of them have racism issues, which of course are related to crime. Um, where do those issues come from? Is it because a particular government, like let's say, let's say you have, um, let's say you have a country, um, I'm trying to think of, think of a country I can name, but, um, I kind of don't want to because I know someone's going to be like, no, you're wrong. They have, you know, I'll cite one example. <laughs> um, but let me, let me just say, um, um, the, um, we have racism and crime in the United States. You have, you have racism and crime in other, in other countries. Um, is that because the government is, you know, if, if we have less crime in one country, is that because the government's better at deterring crime? Or is it because you have a better culture? You have people who are, who are, um, not criminals. Um, you have people who are tolerant of, of, um, diverse cultures and ethnicities. Um, you know, what is it really? Um, and I would say it's, it's more the culture because ultimately, I mean, you look at, you know, the United States with Jim Crow laws, you know, racist laws. Was that, were people racist because the government came up with Jim Crow laws? No. The Jim Crow laws were created for the people, for the racist people who wanted them. Um, and of course, there were so many of them that it was inevitable that, that they'd ultimately be in control of the government and be, be able to write and pass those laws. Um, so I think this is... Uh, I think this is an important... Um, point to acknowledge 
that when we have these societal problems, I see your comment, Jeremy, I want to read that in a second. Um, when we have all these societal problems, we can't just say, oh, well, you know, government's going to come in and fix it. Like, you can't outlaw racism. They've tried. They've created, you know, hate lo- hate, hate crime laws and all this other stuff, but that, that doesn't work. You still have, you know, what does that do? Um, you get people charged with hate crimes every once in a while, but... Um, you know, if you're, if you're beating somebody up, that's still a crime. It doesn't matter if it's a hate crime. Like, does it matter if they're beating them up because of their ethnicity? Um, or does it just matter that, you know, they're beating them up? Like, is it, you know, oh, this guy, he was, he was beating him up because he was black. Well, if, if you find out that maybe the, the guy who was doing the beating is married to a black woman and, you know, all these things come up, oh, he's absolutely not racist. So does that mean he's a good guy and, and, you know, he shouldn't face any penalties for his crime? Or do we say it doesn't matter what his, what his motive was? Well, I guess I don't want to go that far because, you know, it still does matter if it was self-defense, um, or if it was, you know, he was, he was drunk and, and just picked a guy that he just wanted to beat up. Um, because he was looking at him funny, you know, like, that type of reason matters, but how how are you ever going to tell? If, if, uh, you know, if, if two people of different colors get in a fight, how do you know one is beating up the other because of the color of his skin, unless he's, like, yelling racial, racial slurs at the same time? Um, that, that's stupid, and you can't, you just can't outlaw it. It's, I mean, if you tried, you would literally be coming up with thought crimes, which, uh, hopefully if you know a little bit of, um, fictional history, (laughs) you know how well that goes. Um, okay, so, uh, Jeremy, I'm gonna try to read this while I'm driving. Can you just read it to me, man? Um, I have not been able to reach you. Oh, (laughs) Uh, yeah, just, uh, send it to the P.O. Box. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, yeah, I think this is super important because, you know, we have a lot of problems right now. We have, and I'll talk about this police woman in a minute. Um, who's, who's crying about the McDonald's thing, but we have, uh, we have big problems in the United States where people are becoming hostile towards their own government. And a lot of people look at that and they, they say, Hey, this is understandable. The government's been hostile towards us. And then there are others who say, you know, they, they stick to the government indoctrination and say, um, they say, you know, oh, but we need law and order, we need, you know, we need, we need to, uh, you know, protect our, uh, protect our society, our our civilization from all of this savage anarchy, um, you know, and and people say this, and they back the, the thin blue line, and that, that culture is, it's one of, no, 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 the police are absolutely infallible and anything they do is justified. Um, and, and this is really interesting too, because you have, um, I, I was just reading, there was a, there was a so-called Antifa member who killed a couple cops. And, um, of course, you know, Trump's saying Antifa is a terrorist organization, which, you know, it's not really organized, as far as I know. Um, although they do have a fair bit of propaganda. I mean, they've got, like, they've got, like, books, like, handbooks, the, the Antifa handbook. Um, and I don't know who, who authored that or how they're distributing it, but there is, there is some sense of organization, but it's not, it's not organized like the, um, you know, like a political party where it's like, you know, you have a, you have a membership card, um, 
it's not organized like the KKK. Um, but, you know, anybody can just say, oh, I'm Antifa. And the government wants to basically say, well, you're a criminal because you said you're Antifa. Um, well, here's the problem with that. You have police who kill innocent people all the time. You have, you have police... I'm not, I'm not laughing at that. I'm laughing at the comments. You have police who kill people all the time. Um, I, I read... Since George Floyd, 120 people have been killed by the police. Um, I don't know how accurate that number is. I think there's usually about 1,000 per year. Um which works out to about three per day. Uh, so I, I don't think that's... That would be about... Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe 120 is right. Um, but whenever that happens, they say, Oh, yeah, no, it's not, it's not all police. It's just a few bad apples. Which, yes, yeah, statistically is correct. Um, you know, you have, uh, you have a, a police force of, I don't know, a hundred thousand. No, I read a statistic on this recently. What was it? I think it was like 300,000 police and 300,000 sheriff deputies across the country. A total of 600, something like that. Let's just say it's half a million. You got half a million police and out of those half a million police, let's say, let's say out of the 1,000, each one's done by a different cop. That's only 1,000 out of a half a million police that are killing people every year. Statistically, that's very small. But it's just a few bad apples. But how many Antifa members are there? And how many have actually committed crimes? How many, how many have actually killed cops? Just one that I know of so far. Now, I know a lot of people say, yeah, but they're, they're rioting and, and looting. Well, no, actually, a lot of the rioters and looters are not Antifa. They show up, a lot of them, at the protests. They shake their fists. Maybe a couple of them throw some Molotov cocktails at police cars. Um, but uh, how many? And statistically, how many? Does that justify criminalizing everybody else guilty by association who labels themselves as Antifa? Or is this another double standard that the government is using against us? When you do it, it's one thing. When we do it, it's okay. When we do it, it's just a few bad apples. Well, this is the whole thing about the, the bad apple thing, right? Like, if you have bad apples... You uh, usually tend to get them out of the bunch, right? Out of the barrel, whatever, wherever they are. Um, you throw them out. <laughs> but that's not really how the police work. They, uh, they keep them employed, or they'll take them out of one barrel and stick them in another. You knew it was a bad apple when you stuck it in the barrel. Um, that's what they do. Um... So I wanted to talk about this uh, this police woman. Oh man, and then I'm gonna talk about the guy that, that got shot with the taser. Um, uh, so much, so much going on. Okay, so the the police woman. She recorded this video and uploaded it. She's crying her eyes out. She's sitting in the in the drive through of McDonald's, or uh, out you know in the in the parking lot of McDonald's. She gives this whole story about how she pulled up. She made sure to order ahead of time because she doesn't like people paying for her food because she's a police officer. She's off duty. She's, she just works a 12-hour shift. She's on her way home. She's tired. She's done so much to help so many people. Um, you know, all this stuff. She ordered her food. She sat. She waited. She waited. She waited. And it wasn't ready. And then they told her to, like, pull up and just wait. And she waited and waited and waited. And they finally came outside with her coffee and not the rest of her food. And she started crying and said, you know what? And this this is the important part. This is really important. Because a lot of people said, like, oh, yeah, you just got bad service at McDonald's. Um, she was crying 
for one reason, because uh, a few days ago, I guess there was uh, some cops that ordered some food at a fast food place, and they ended up with bleach in their drink. And so this woman said, I can't see you making my food, and now I'm actually worried, and I've never felt like this before. People used to come up to me and say, thank you for your service, and, and this kind of stuff, and um, now she's afraid because everybody hates her and treats her with contempt because of what's going on. Now... And, and she's, she's crying and she's crying and she's saying, please, please, just give us a break. That's what she says. Give us a break. Now, I'm, I'm about to talk about traffic cops. And I want to say this. I don't know. Maybe she's not a traffic cop. Maybe she's one of the police. Maybe she's a good cop. Maybe she shows up when there's a domestic dispute, when people are calling for help, and she shows up, and maybe she's the person who says, hey, guys, calm down. We don't need to fight. And maybe she doesn't arrest everybody she finds. Maybe she's a good cop. Maybe she's a, she's not a cop, but a peacekeeper. Not a law enforcement, but a, a law enforcement officer, but a peacekeeper. Maybe. I don't know. But we, we lump them all into the same category, right? When you see a cop behind you, and you're driving on the highway, that's just a cop. You don't know if he's a traffic cop. You don't know if he's... I mean, maybe if he's on a motorcycle, you know. But you don't know if he's a traffic cop. You don't know if he's on his way to another call. It's a cop. It's, they're all part of the same organization. They all follow the same rules. If there's a high-speed chase, they're all going to get, get... Like, even the people doing the domestic violence calls are probably going to be chasing... You know, that everybody gets involved, right? And, um... So they're, they're all they're all still cops. And when you get stopped by a cop, come on, man, give me a break. How many times do they give you a break? Update on the bleach story. It was proven to be false. It was most likely food poisoning. All right? And see, that, and that's a thing. Like, so... food poisoning, okay, so whatever, whatever happened with the story, um, the, the point is that whether it's true or false, it's a real fear that people have, and this extends to racism also, um, whether it's true, like, you know, people say, oh yeah, the police aren't racist, and, and you know, when a, when a black driver gets stopped, he shouldn't be paranoid, because racism doesn't exist, or the police are not going to treat people differently. If that were absolutely true, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't fucking matter because like facts don't care about your feelings. Your feelings don't care about facts. And if you get stopped and you're black and you're afraid that the white officer who stopped you might be racist, maybe he's not. But maybe you believe that. You can't change that belief, right? Can you? You you can't. I mean, imagine this: you're you're um, you're walking through the woods, and a bear uh, a bear approaches you, and it's, it starts you know growling at you. You're gonna be afraid. Can you just convince yourself I'm not gonna be afraid, and your fear just goes away? No. Does it matter um, if, um, here's one, my, my wife's afraid of some, uh, uh, some lizards or, or spiders or stuff that we have, um, you know, she thinks they're poisonous. They're not. It doesn't matter how many times I tell her that. It doesn't matter the fact that they're not poisonous. She's afraid of them and she reacts with that fear every time she sees them. This is the exact same thing. So so this story about the ble- about the bleach, right? Whether it's true or not and and you know this is the this is kind of the problem with media, right? Once it gets released, you cannot find every single person who ever heard that story and make sure that they get the update that it never happened. So now you have, you know, now you have a divided society 
where some people are like, oh yeah, they, they poisoned the cops, and then the other people are like, no, they found out that wasn't true, and then it's like, well, who's your source? And it's like, well, sorry, I don't have the article right here from, from CNN, you know, or your favorite news outlet to, to prove it to you, so now people just kind of question it, like, oh yeah, I heard it, maybe it's true, maybe it's false, I don't know. And we get to this point of like, well, I don't know if it's true or false. But the thought still being out there makes people consider it um, when they consider their actions. Um, a lot of people say the coronavirus doesn't even exist. A lot of people are absolutely paranoid about it. Um, it. It affects people's behavior just knowing there's a possibility. Like, if the coronavirus turned out never to have existed in the first place, I'm not, I'm not arguing that, that that's going to happen, but if, if that were to happen you'd still have people going around saying, yeah, but I just feel safer with my mask on. And so you have this cop who's afraid because of how how people are treating police. But somehow the police community can't understand that we're afraid because of how they treat us. They can't understand. Why would you be afraid of the police unless you're a criminal? Oh, they don't they don't shoot innocent people? Ever? How do you know the, the police always say, you know, can I see your ID? We just want to make sure you don't have any warrants. What makes you think I have warrants? Well, we don't think you have warrants, we just want to make sure you don't have warrants. Well, okay. If that's your assumption, and, and this is how they train the police, treat everybody as if they're criminal. Because you never know, and during any traffic stop that person might be the one that pulls a gun on you and takes your life. So every traffic stop, treat everybody like a criminal. That's that's how they train them. So why shouldn't we be trained? Well, every traffic stop, treat that cop like he's a murderer. Because you never know, you might get stopped by a lot of good cops, but you never know if that time, that next time you get stopped, if that's the one that's going to kill you. Somehow that's a ridiculous thought for us to have. And I want to get back to this, this this point that she said, give us a break. Give us a break, please. How often do they give us a break? Sorry, you, you turned your you made a turn and you didn't use your blinker. I'm gonna give you a ticket for a hundred dollars. Is that how much those are? I don't know. I don't pay tickets. I haven't paid tickets in like ten years. I don't know if the prices have gone up. Um yeah, I don't play those stupid games, but when I did, I got stopped so many times for so many things. Oh, I, I didn't know I couldn't make a U-turn here. Well, ignorance is no, explace, no, no excuse for the law. Please, please, can you just give me a break? No, I'm sorry if I gave everyone a break. So, I'm sorry, Officer Mickey D's. Um, why should we give you a break? You, every morning, get up and you put on the same uniform that other people use to murder people in cold blood and get away with it. And you put on that same uniform. How do you expect us to treat you? I mean, shit, how would you feel about somebody walking around in a Nazi uniform? Especially in, in Germany in World War II. Or anywhere anywhere in Europe that their troops were in World War II. Walking around in a Nazi uniform. And people yelling and screaming at him. And he's like, why are you yelling and screaming at me? I haven't killed anybody. I haven't taken a single life. Yeah, but you're wearing the same uniform. So that kind of uh, signifies that you're with the people who are. Oh, no, I don't agree with the people who are doing all the killing. Yeah, but uh, you're supporting their agency by being a part of them. You're supporting their power by increasing their numbers. This woman who wants a break, she's probably paying union dues which is helping the police unions get stronger, which is helping them protect their officers from prosecution. 
consider that. So while she might be a good cop, while she might be out there doing good things and trying to keep the peace and trying to make our society safer, she's still supporting a system that protects murderers who kill innocent people. So I've been I've been making this suggestion. If you can't live with that, if you can't live with the disrespect that you get for putting on that uniform, take the uniform off. And if you still want to protect your community, you still want to you still want to be a good cop and you want to be a peacekeeper. I, I should stop saying being a good cop. I should <laughs> I should just leave it at being a peacekeeper. If you want to be a peacekeeper, if you want to be a good person and protect your community, go join the sheriff's department instead. And I know the sheriff's department isn't perfect. There's still a lot of corruption and everything there. But at least the sheriff's department is more accountable. You get to elect the sheriff and everybody who works for the sheriff as a deputy is under the direct responsibility of that sheriff. And that sheriff is responsible to nobody but the voters, the people of the county. If a sheriff's deputy does something wrong, the sheriff will be held responsible. And if he will and if you can't find a way to hold him responsible, you can sue him. I don't think I, I don't know how much qualified immunity uh, works on sheriffs, but um, a sheriff is not an employee of a corporation. A police department is a corporation for a city, which is a corporation. The the chief of police is not responsible to the citizens of that city. He responds only to the mayor. A police department is private security hired by a city. He is not a sheriff. You don't get to vote for him in a lot of cities. A police department is there for revenue generation and law enforcement, not for peacekeeping. There's a huge difference between sheriffs and police, and we need to really understand that difference. And we need to stop treating them the same. And we need to understand that there, there are um, different ways to respond. And I've been looking for the statistics on this to, to figure out how many of these police killings are done by police versus how many are done by sheriffs. Um, I, I, I mentioned earlier that I, I looked up the stats and I found out there's about the same number employed about the same number of sheriffs employed as there are um, as there are police officers. If you're working for a police department, quit your job. Go work for the sheriff. And if the sheriff sucks, run. Run for sheriff. Get elected. Do a better job. Give us more options. If you're really that peacekeeper, if you're really that that cop that that is really out there to keep the community safe, you're not out there to steal from people. You're not out there to, to use your aggression and kill people. If that's really you, if you really want to protect and serve your community, become a sheriff. Become the sheriff. That's the best way to do it. You know what else the sheriff can do? The sheriff can arrest police officers. Not a lot of people know that. So, um, if ignorance of the law is no excuse, shouldn't we prosecute any officer who arrests someone falsely? That's, that's a good point. Um, especially since as a law enforcement officer, you're supposed to know the laws that you enforce. I mean, that's, that doesn't sound too unreasonable. <laughs> I mean, you know a joint is illegal. 
you know going a few miles over the speed limit is illegal. Yeah, no, they don't they don't seem to know the law and they'll arrest you for things like y- you would think. It, see, this would be this would be a good system. Oh. Got a little sunrise coming on over here. Um, you would think this would be a good system, right? Let's say a police officer first of all he sees you doing something and he wants to arrest you. If it's a false arrest, that means he's arresting you for something that's not illegal. Now, if it's not illegal, now maybe he doesn't know it's not illegal, but there should be a couple a couple things that take place. First of all, he should see, well, okay, I don't know if what he's doing is illegal, but is he bothering anybody? Is he bothering anybody's property? Is there anybody complaining about what he's doing? Because if not, it doesn't even really matter if if it's illegal. Like, uh, I talk about the, the Frisbee law in California. For a while, it was illegal to uh, throw a Frisbee at the beach. They stopped enforcing the law, but it was still a law for like 30-something years until they repealed it. So if you see someone throwing a frisbee and they're not bothering anybody, there's nobody else on the beach, even though it's illegal, maybe you should just leave them alone. Now, if there's something else and you see somebody doing something and you think it might be illegal, but again, they're not bothering anybody and you want to arrest them, now, I don't agree with this or this arrest in the first place, but let's say you arrest them because you think it's illegal, but you're not sure. Either you've received really bad training with your police department and whoever trained you should be held responsible for that illegal arrest, or this little thing on your shoulder, what do you call it? A radio? Isn't there somebody at the other end of that thing that you can talk to? Yeah, uh, this guy is uh, riding, it's it's like a bicycle, but it only has one wheel. I think that's illegal and I want to arrest him. Maybe dispatch would say, uh, no, it's, it's actually called a unicycle and those are totally legal. Leave him alone. No, what they'll do is they'll arrest the guy and they'll they'll book him and say, yeah, um, he, he was riding a bicycle that was missing a wheel, which is a safety, uh, safety issue. I, as I'm saying this, this is so ridiculous, I could absolutely see it happening. Um... They, they might give the case to the to the prosecutor, and the prosecutor might say, no, that's actually not illegal. They'll dismiss the case. The cop probably won't even get notified that, hey, that was an, that was an unlawful arrest. He won't get charged. Like, this doesn't make any sense. This is absolute stupidity. We've given we've given carte blanche authority to police officers to arrest anybody anytime for anything. My friend who was a cop back in the 70s said they had a saying, you can beat the rap, but you can't beat the ride. They can arrest you for anything they want. And yeah, you're not going to get charged. You're not going to go to prison. You you might not even pay a fine, but you're going to sit in jail for 24 hours. Or if it's on a Friday afternoon, you're going to sit in jail for the weekend. They are going to take your freedom away for a pretty significant period of time. And there are absolutely zero consequences for that. If I did that, I'd be charged with kidnapping. In fact, I'm pretty sure, um, I mean, there there are laws that, I, and I need to find an expert on this, but because uh, I think this is actually a really interesting subject, but citizens arrest. If you make a citizen's arrest and 
you don't have the right reason for it, you can be held liable. So what makes police, police who are supposed to know the law better than us, because they're supposed to enforce it, what makes police so special that they shouldn't be charged when they commit a crime? That they're supposed to be an expert on? It, it makes absolutely no sense. There was another, uh, what else was I going to talk about? Something with the police. Oh, shit, this guy that got shot with the taser. Hang on, Bitcoin pimp. I like to remember that it's illegal yet harmless. Therefore, it's cool. Yeah, I mean, but that goes back to this woman, this, this police officer. Give us a break. Are they going to give you a break? I mean, how many people, how many people have gotten stopped with a joint and said, look, officer, I know it's illegal, but I'm not, I'm not harming anybody. I'm not driving. I'm not operating heavy machinery. I'm not selling it. I'm not a minor. Give me a break. I don't know. It'd be interesting to, I'd, I'd be interested to hear um, uh, any any particular cases where you said, I know it's illegal, um, but I'm not, but it's harmless. I know it's illegal, but it's harmless. And, and where a cop. By a cop who's like on his way to, you know, lunch with his wife, he'll probably give you a warning. But if you get stopped by a cop who's hiding in the bushes looking for speeders, there are no warnings. He's there for one reason and one reason only to fill that quota. Okay, so this other thing I wanted to talk about, and then I'll go. This guy with the taser. So apparently he drove, he drove drunk to a Wendy's, fell asleep in his car. I don't know if he drove there drunk, or maybe he's drinking in the parking lot. Maybe his. <laughs> and I've I've been in this situation before, where you go somewhere, you meet with people, you drink, and then you wander off somewhere else. You didn't drink to get there. Happens all the time. Um, it's illegal to sit, it's illegal to go to a bar and drink, and then when the bar closes, go out and sit in your car, in the driver's seat. You can sit in the passenger's seat, and it varies from state to state, but it's illegal. It doesn't matter if you're driving the car. Some states will say, well, if you had your keys in the ignition, you were operating. Yeah, but it's negative uh, 20 degrees outside. It would have frozen to death if I didn't turn the car on to, so I'd have some heat. Uh, it doesn't matter. You are operating couple thousand dollar fines, misdemeanor charge, huge mark on your on your driver's record. Um, it's going to totally impact your life. Um, Colin, Colin Noir. Can you send me his info? Because as soon as I as soon as I close this stream, that's going to disappear and I'm going to forget the name I'm driving right now. Um, that would be that would be awesome. I'll, uh, I'll reach out to him. Um, maybe I'll have him on the show and we can talk about we can talk about that. Um, so this guy, he's, he's there. You know, okay. The questions they were asking him. Will you take a breathalyzer test? What's the, a PBT? Preliminary, and he's like, what's a PBT? It's a preliminary breath test. Well, why, why would I want to take that? He's like, so we can tell if you've been drinking. The guy says, I'm not gonna lie, I've been drinking. And the cop asks him over and over, will you take a PBT? Will you take a PBT? Will you take a PBT? I know this. I know why. 
because I've been arrested for punking Drublik before. Charges never stuck. I told them I hadn't been drinking. And when I got to the department, so it's a long story. This whole thing started because I was asking a police officer some questions he didn't like about how he was doing his job. So he arrests me. What are you arresting me for? Public intoxication. I'm not drunk. Tell it to the judge. We get to the we get to the jail. I tell the jailer, hey, I haven't been drinking. Can you give me a breath test? I know you guys have a breath machine here. Uh, no, we don't give a breath test unless you've been driving. So here, a person who has been arrested, who is willing to give evidence, if I have been drinking, there's no harm in giving me the, the breath test. I mean, it'll show on record that I have alcohol in my system, right? If that's all you want, a yes or a no. But that's not what they want. They insisted on giving this guy a breath test because they wanted to know if he was over .08 or not. They were going to charge him with a DUI. And in fact, that's why they put him in handcuffs. They said, you're not safe to drive. We're going we're gonna to arrest you. I think he actually did take the test. I, I, I kind of fast forward past that part. But I think he did take the test. Oh, you're over point oh eight. We're going to arrest you for driving under the influence because you were sitting in a parked car. That's what happened. Now, this is what really pisses me off even more. These fucking police. Their dicks are so fucking hard for conviction. Ooh, my numbers. I got to get my numbers. I got one. Calling the boys. I'm going to make my quota this week. I'm going to be number one. I got more arrests than anybody else. Uh, officer, look, I know I've been drinking, but uh, my, my sister's house is two blocks that way. I'll walk home. <laughs> no. You're not walking home. You're going to the police station. I don't care if I have to kill you to get you there. And people wonder why there's a song called Fuck the Police. That really fucking pissed me off. They didn't even catch him driving drunk. They were not charging him with putting anybody in danger. They were just trying to get some money out of him. Couldn't just let him walk home. So I have a friend... Um, I talked about before. He was a cop in the 70s. Um, he told me he stopped people driving drunk all the time. He'd throw their keys in the bushes. You know, on the side of the highway in Texas where it's just brush. You ain't finding those keys until, <laughs> until the sun comes up. You'll be sober. He said he even took this one guy, he stopped this one drunk driver at the end of his shift. He took him out to breakfast so he could sober up. He was just a regular cop. He became a cop because he wanted to keep his community safe. He didn't kill anybody. That just made me so fucking angry to see this video. You fucking pieces of shit had so many opportunities to de-escalate that. You had so many opportunities to let him just walk home. Oh yeah, but he could have come back and taken his car and driven. Yeah, you know what? Coulda, coulda, coulda. All fucking day. Anybody 
walking down the street. Walk into the...